I'm a sad gorilla. Oh, wait. Now I'm a happy gorilla. Oh, hi. You caught me going bananas. Speaking of going bananas, let's talk about how DC Comics went bananas for gorillas. <laughs> Welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. Folks, today we're going to take a look at an actual comic trope. The idea of gorillas on the covers of comic books. Why did it come into existence? Well, it seems like it sells copies. And why wouldn't it? Humanity has always had a fascination with primates like apes. We keep them in our zoos, we have them in our fiction, and why wouldn't we? They're a lot like us in a lot of ways over 95% of the same DNA, they're bipedal, they have families, they can learn language, and yet they also get to run around without any clothes on, and they're 20 times stronger than us. So there's a lot to like about uh, gorillas. Today, we're gonna take a look at the history of putting gorillas on the covers of comic books, try to understand why that was a thing, try to look at some of the weirder examples of gorillas in the history of comics. So, uh, break out your bananas, and let's see why DC Comics in particular went ape for gorillas. Sorry. When comic books arose in the 1930s, they were heavily influenced by the pulp magazine stories of their time. Characters like the Spider and the Shadow helped create Batman, for instance. Tarzan was another popular hero, and that led to an entire genre of jungle comics like, well, Jungle Comics by Fiction House and Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Those would frequently feature the protagonist going up against dangerous animals, including gorillas. You might think that the Golden Age would have been more popular for gorillas. King Kong was less than 10 years old, but they were really no more common than any other wild animal. Nevertheless, there were a few highlights. For instance, More Fun Comics number 56 in 1940 introduced Congo Bill, who was more or less a pastiche of the famous comic strip Jungle Jim, but keep Congo Bill in mind because he'll come up later. And in 1944, one of Wonder Woman's main villains was introduced. In issue 9, we met Giganta, if you're only familiar with Giganta from the modern comics where she can grow to giant proportions, or the old Super Friends cartoon where that idea was introduced, you may not know that Giganta is a gorilla. In issue 9, Professor Zool used an evolution machine to advance a gorilla named Giganta into a brutish woman with red hair. While the science wasn't right, yeah, Giganta is technically a gorilla. And while many comics historians and comic historians will point to 1956 as the year that the Silver Age started, when DC started making new versions of their superheroes, towards the end of the Golden Age, superheroes were less popular for readers and sci-fi was on the rise. Some of this was due to service members returning from the war and being a bit older and enjoying genres like sci-fi, horror, and romance as the 50s began. And a key issue when DC noted that gorillas and sci-fi was a killer combo was issue 8 of Strange Adventures from 1951. That issue featured a bizarre story by Gardner Fox where a criminal accidentally kills a scientist who has created an evolution machine, so he uses it to advance himself so that he can claim to be the scientist. He then continues to evolve himself all the way past the pinnacle of human evolution and start over again, but the machine shorts out while he is a gorilla. Thus, he is doomed to live in a zoo as a talking gorilla. The story almost didn't matter. What did was that the book sold, and thus DC realized that adding a gorilla to a cover meant more sales. In Les Daniel's book, DC Comics, 60 Years of the World's Favorite Comic Book Heroes, former editor Julia Schwartz is quoted as saying that their editorial director, Erwin Donenfeld, quote, called me in and said, we should try it again. 
Finally, all the editors wanted to use Gorilla covers, and he said, no more than one a month, end quote. That quote is a secondhand story, so there's a chance that it could be apocryphal, it could be an urban legend. But the fact is, Strange Adventures did continue to use gorillas on the cover after that, and the trend just exploded in popularity at DC throughout the 1950s. At the beginning of 1953, Strange Adventures 16 featured a gorilla about to be brain-swapped with Captain Comet. And then, by the end of the year, issue 26 teases a courtroom trial where Captain Comet argues a gorilla has the mind of a man. And it didn't stop there. Twelve more issues of that book featured a gorilla on the cover. My favorite is issue 75, which features a gorilla robbing the library. Apes love books. But taking a look at all of these covers, many of them feature talking or intelligent gorillas. So perhaps a more accurate assessment of the trope of gorillas on comic book covers is that it's popular to see intelligent gorillas on comic book covers. The last of the Strange Adventures covers to feature a gorilla is also the introduction of a supervillain gorilla. But it wasn't the first. 1953 also gave readers issue 75 of Batman, introducing the Gorilla Boss of Gotham. This was the story of a gangster whose mind is physically transplanted into a gorilla. He then goes on a crime spree that Batman has to stop. In 1954, Superboy fought King Gorilla to protect Lana Lang and her family. King Gorilla flat out was a ripoff of King Kong. And rounding out DC's top three heroes, Wonder Woman went up against a gorilla for a game of baseball in issue 78 from 1955. Or did she? The cover shows her trying to get to home plate before a gorilla tags her out, but the cover was completely deceptive. The story inside by Bob Kaniger, so you know it'll be crazy, features two schools being forced to merge unless a headmistress's school can win a game of baseball. Fortunately, she's friends with Wonder Woman, but unfortunately, all of her students are out sick and Wonder Woman's only teammate is a gorilla named Andy. Wonder Woman is patient and teaches Andy how to play with her and also has to compete with a number of other zany rules like batting with her teeth instead of her hands. They win the game in case you had your doubts. Bob Kaniger later wrote another one-off gorilla story in Star Spangled War Stories issue 126. That was a story about a gorilla named Charlie trained to fight in the war. He became Sergeant Gorilla. DC hit that idea again in the 1980s with issue 89 of Weird War Tales with a story about gorillas that the Nazis use. But especially in the 1950s, DC was going ape for gorillas. According to artist Sheldon Moldoff, who was drawing his fair share of gorilla covers on Batman at the time, gorillas led to sales. He explained in an interview with the comics journal, quote, now, I know Jack Schiff, when he was the editor of Batman, he followed sales very well. When he found out that a gorilla on covers sold, then you could be damn sure that in an issue or two, you're going to have another gorilla story. It didn't matter how bonkers a story was. If it justified a gorilla on the cover, it got approved. That's the best way I can explain Adventure Comics 219 from 1955. In that issue, Superboy helps a scientist capture a rare gorilla, but a photographer figures out that the gorilla has x-ray vision by hiding bananas in a box. There's no other reason a gorilla would open a box that smells like bananas after all. The man then steals the gorilla with some henchmen, and they learn that lightning triggers the x-ray vision, which they use to melt walls into banks. Superboy finds that the X-ray vision was gained from the gorilla drinking water with kryptonite in it, which leaves him weak. But ultimately, Superboy drains the sky of lightning by building a gigantic battery, and then is able to subdue the gorilla with judo. That story was by writer Otto Binder, and he must have realized that he had a good idea there, because less than a year later, he created a new adversary for Superman, Titano a gigantic gorilla that has kryptonite vision. That story begins in Superman number 127. A chimpanzee named Toto is presented as especially intelligent. So some scientists decide to throw him into space. Superman helps with that. 
Toto comes back having been blasted with radiation, which causes him to grow into a gigantic gorilla with kryptonite vision and is renamed Titano. Fortunately, Titano tries to mimic Lois, so she tricks him into putting on lead-lined glasses and Superman subdues the beast. Titano would appear again, but with diminishing returns, being defeated by Crypto the Superdog and Bizarro and even Jimmy Olsen. The Jimmy Olsen one is especially fun as Jimmy also grows super huge and Titano tries to shave Jimmy with a helicopter. And speaking of Jimmy Olsen, that title featured a lot of guerrilla action for a book about a newspaper photographer. Issue 24 features Jimmy getting his mind swapped with a gorilla. Issue 116 reprinted the same story, but gave it a new cover. Meanwhile, Issue 10 featured Jimmy acting like Tarzan, which was an excuse to get a gorilla on the cover. In Issue 98, Superman forced Jimmy to marry a gorilla, but fortunately, that's not legally binding. A gorilla saves Jimmy and falls in love with him instantly. But when Superman takes Jimmy away, the gorilla throws a tantrum. So Jimmy's best friend, Superman, performs a fake wedding to placate the gorilla. Jimmy tricks the gorilla into breaking up by showing her a movie where a gorilla throws a man off a cliff and she duplicates the act. Brilliant! Superman himself dealt with more gorillas than just Titano and Chandu, the gorilla with x-ray vision. In issue 238 of Action Comics, he faced down a super gorilla called King Krypton, which turned out to be a Kryptonian scientist who'd played with an evolution machine and turned himself accidentally into a gorilla. People need to stop doing that. Jumping back to Congo Bill, he continued to appear in Action Comics backup stories and met a golden gorilla in issue 224 from 1957. In issue 248 from January of 1959, Bill was transformed into that golden gorilla and from then on was known as Kong Gorilla, an intelligent, heroic gorilla. We've now seen how bonkers DC went regarding gorillas on the covers and as we go into the end of the 1950s and moving forward, we're now going to get introduced to the next generation of DC gorillas because DC has not one, not two, but three intelligent supervillain gorillas. We're going to go into them as well as a few other not as well known but recurring gorillas. If there's one gorilla more famous than the rest in comic books, it's Gorilla Grodd an intelligent supervillain gorilla who is the archenemy of the Flash. Because of course, when you have a superhero who can move really fast, you think of Speed's natural enemy, gorillas. Gorilla Grodd first debuted in issue 106 of The Flash from 1959. The issue was written by John Broom and illustrated by Carmine Infantino. Grodd wasn't mind-swiped or evolved. Instead, radiation turned a ton of apes super intelligent, and this became known as Gorilla City. Grodd and the city's leader, Solovar, also gained telepathy and telekinesis. Combined with his innate gorilla strength, he's a triple threat. Grodd has gone on to appear in cartoons, games, toys, and even live action. DC continued to include run-of-the-mill gorillas from outer space here and there, like in House of Mystery 118 or Wonder Woman 170, but now that the publisher had talking supervillain gorillas, there was no going back. Keep in mind that Grodd, Titano, King Krypton, and the rest all came out before Planet of the Apes. That movie didn't come out until 1968 and featured a world where apes, including gorillas, could talk, and ruled the planet. The movie was based on a French sci-fi novel from 1963, but everything we've gone into detail so far precedes that. There are still a few more gorillas in DC Comics that I want to discuss, but at this point, I will say that a lot of them become variations on the idea of Grodd. I think he was the first. That said, some of them are still just different enough to be a blast, like Monsieur Mala. Oh, Monsieur. Monsieur Mala appears on the cover of issue 86 of Doom Patrol's first volume. That issue first introduces a supervillain named The Brain, a genius scientist who now exists as just a brain. 
The brain explains he experimented on a gorilla to make it super intelligent and become his assistant. Writer Arnold Drake and artist Bruno Premiani continued to use Brain and Monsieur Mala throughout their run with Mala a loyal henchman. But in 1990, Grant Morrison wrote new Doom Patrol stories that delved into their background even more. Brain explained he originally planned to move his brain into Mala, but once he saw Mala's intelligence, he couldn't bring himself to do it. In issue 36, with Brain in a robot body, the two declared their love for one another. While the two are villains, they also have a pure love that is certainly not based on the physical. One Gorilla cover that proved to be a one-off was 1965's Detective Comics number 339. That issue featured a man who aimed to give himself the superpowers of a gorilla, but accidentally gave the gorilla super intelligence. The following year, Jiro Kuwata re-envisioned the character as Professor Gorilla for his Batman manga. That version had a tiny cameo in the Brave and the Bold cartoon episode, Batmite Presents Batman's Strangest Cases. Another strange one-off was the Mod Gorilla Boss, who appeared in issue 201 of Strange Adventures as an enemy of Animal Man. It's a pretty dynamic cover, featuring a natalie dressed gorilla grabbing Animal Man. Animal Man can mimic the powers of any animal near him, but he can't seem to copy this gorilla. But Animal Man later figures out that that's because it isn't a real gorilla. And eventually, a regular mob boss is revealed because his potion wears out. In terms of recurring, intelligent gorilla enemies, we so far have Grodd and Mala, but DC actually introduced a third super intelligent gorilla in 1981, the Ultra Humanite. Originally, the Ultra Humanite was a mostly bald mad scientist who was introduced as Superman's first arch enemy before Lex Luthor came along. He was similar to Lex, but he was even more of an opposite to Superman as he was physically disabled. In issue 195 of Justice League of America, the Ultra Humanite debuts in a new form, having transferred his brain into an albino gorilla. Writer Jerry Conway and artist George Perez told a great three-part story of the Ultra Humanite leading a version of the Injustice Gang against both the Justice League and the Justice Society. Clearly, DC Comics went especially crazy with Gorilla covers. But what about their main competition, Marvel? Well, Marvel actually doesn't have that many Gorilla characters. In fact, the only prominent one I can really think of is Gorilla Man. But even saying that, there's actually three different characters that use that name. There's a hero, there's a villain, and then there was a one-off sci-fi story. They're all called Gorilla Man. But for the sake of completionists out there, let's discuss at least a handful of popular gorillas that have appeared on comic book covers. There weren't many gorilla covers in the 1980s, but by the 1990s, we got Monkey Man and O'Brien by Arthur Adams, Sky Ape by Phil Amara, Tim McCarney, and Mike Russo, and the brilliant Rex Mantooth, an early work by Matt Fraction and Andy Kuhn. Of course, Grodd continues to appear on covers regularly. So why do gorillas appear so much on comic covers? Because they look cool. This ain't rocket surgery. Gorillas are powerful and dynamic. But the Silver Age books by DC would also tease something completely absurd or unexpected. And a gorilla talking was a pretty fast way to accomplish that. Yes. Putting a gorilla on the cover is a comic trope. It's something that happens a lot. It seems to sell issues. Cool. But one thing I learned that I wasn't expecting was that there's also some comic tropes story-wise with these gorillas. I thought a lot of them would just be a ape blasted with radiation or a gorilla that had its brain swapped. But in terms of the actual stories, the two things I kept coming across over and over were one, a gorilla having been evolved from a person or devolved, some sort of evolution thing, bad science, but whatever, and the, the best way to defeat a gorilla was to get it to mimic something. So that was interesting to, to learn that there were storytelling comic tropes about gorillas. I didn't expect that. 
I think the main thing that we can all take away from this, though, is that DC has plenty of super intelligent gorillas, and the rest of you publishers out there, well, you need to step up your game. It's just common sense. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I enjoyed doing this one. This one was a blast. I will see you next week with a new Comic Tropes episode. And please remember that I also have a weekly show on my other channel, which is called Pros and Cons. That's on Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific. I do a live stream where I do quick mini reviews of what I've read in comics in the past week, as well as go over the comic book news and chat with people live about all sorts of comic book stuff. So some more content there for you. Otherwise, if you can remember to hit things like like and subscribe, if you haven't already, leave a comment or share it with somebody new. That really, really helps the channel grow, helps me, and I'm grateful for it. If you've watched it this far, you've probably already done that, but it never hurts to remind people. All right, I will be back soon. Until then, I want you to keep reading comics. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider hitting like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, there are merchandise links beneath the YouTube video, and you can always hit join on YouTube or visit Comic Tropes on Patreon to get access to special perks. There are still a few more gorillas in DC Comics that I want to get into. Um, mm, phrasing, phrasing. So, there's something freeing about that idea. Well, folks, I don't know what I'm gonna say. Oh, they're 20 times stronger than us. It didn't matter how bonkers a story was. If it justified a cover, cover, a cover on the gorilla. He created a new adversary for Superman, Titano. Titano, I think I'll pronounce it Titano. Issue 116 reprinted the, sh uh, the shame story, the shame, James, <laughs> he faced down a super gorilla. Nick, <laughs> uh, I gotta say this with a straight face. Instead, radiation turned a ton of. <laughs> this is so bonkers. There are. Hmm. Originally, the ultra humanite was a mostly bald scientist, mad scientist. That's important. Let's get that right.